In our quest to calculate the mass of the sun, let's start with an obvious fact. Naturally, we can't go and measure the mass of the sun, so we're going to have to deduce it from some information that is available to us. The first question that should come to mind is, what connects us to the sun? Well, there's its light, its heat, and gravity. Of these three, gravity is the most relevant within the context of the discussion. We know that the gravitational force is what keeps Earth in an orbit around the Sun. Assuming the orbit is a circle with radius r, we can see that this is a centripetal motion scenario where the gravitational force is acting as the centripetal force. The gravitational force is given by G capital M small m over r squared, where G is the gravitational constant, capital M is the larger mass, small m is the smaller mass, and r is the radius of the circle, or the distance between the two bodies. The formula for centripetal force is mv squared over r where m is the mass of the body that is going around in a circle, v is its speed, and r is the radius of that circle. We know that the gravitational force is the centripetal force, so equating these forces to one another, we can see that small m cancels out. This tells us that we don't need to know the mass of the Earth in order to conclude the mass of the Sun using this method. We can see that one R term also cancels out, so we get GM over R is equal to V squared. Solving for M, the mass of the Sun, we get R over G times V squared. Now, R is the radius of the circle, which is the distance between the Earth and the Sun, and that is known to be one astronomical unit approximately 150 million kilometers or 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. G is the gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. But what is V? V is the speed at which Earth is orbiting around the Sun. Now, we assumed the motion to be circular, so the distance that Earth travels is the circumference of that circle, and the time it takes is the period of revolution. So V equals 2 pi r over t. Substituting this in the equation, we get 4 pi squared r cubed over g t squared. Now the question is, what is this t, this period of revolution? We know that it takes Earth one year to complete one full revolution around the Sun. So that's 365 days. There are 24 hours every day, 60 minutes every hour, and 60 seconds every minute. So we get a total of 3.1536 times 10 to the 7 seconds. We are now ready to use this formula. Substituting the values, we get a mass of around 2.0086 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. Checking the widely accepted value for the mass of the Sun, we can see that we are a little bit off. But why is that the case? Why is there this discrepancy? There are actually a few sources of error in the approximation we used. First and foremost, one year is actually 365.25 days. The reason being, every four years there is a leap year in which there is an additional day. So to account for this extra day, we say that on average, every year has one quarter of a day extra. So that we would have averaged out this extra day over every four year period. In addition, the constants r and g we used in the formula were not the most precise. We can really do with including some more decimal places to further enhance the accuracy of our result. Putting these two things in mind, our refined value 
for the mass of the sun becomes 1.9886 times 10 to the 30. So we're getting there. This is a much better approximation. But is there something else we can do to go one step further? Remember how in the beginning of the video we assumed the orbit to be circular? Well, it's not exactly a circle. It's more of an ellipse. This naturally introduces some error to our approximation, but there doesn't seem to be too much we can do about it, because our whole method relies on equating the gravitational force to the centripetal one, which necessitates that the motion is circular. But there may be some hope. Recall that when we were deriving the formula for the mass of the sun, the mass of the earth, or small m, cancelled out. This shows us that the mass of the earth is not required. This inspires us to perhaps use some other planet in the solar system and proceed in the same way. The formula would still be 4 pi squared r cubed over g t squared. But the values of r and t will have to be adjusted to reflect that other planet. The reason we may want to consider doing this is because approximating an elliptical orbit to be circular may be less erroneous for other planets. And this begs the question, would using a planet closer to or further from the Sun than Earth improve or worsen the approximation? In other words, is a larger ellipse or a smaller ellipse better approximated as a circle? If it's a larger ellipse, then we may want to consider repeating the process using a planet like Saturn or Jupiter. But if it's a smaller ellipse, then maybe using Mercury or Venus will yield more accurate results. Which one is it? Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below.